Hello Creative Gems, welcome back to Creativity. And if you're new here, I'm Sandy. Today's craft video is going to be all about bowls, bowls, and more bowls. These bowls I'm showing you here are actually bowls I already made a couple of years ago and if you want to see how I made those, I'll leave a link in the description box to those tutorials. But today, we're going to jump straight into some fresh new bowl designs that have never been seen before. For our first bowl, I have taken a large round plastic bowl from the Dollar Tree and I have actually spray painted it metallic silver already. The spray paint was applied to the outside of the bowl and to be honest, you can see I actually didn't do a very good job on the spray paint as you can still see my fingers through the bowl. But given the original bowl used to be clear, it's not too bad and will certainly be sufficient for the bowl design I have in mind. First, I'm going to take some Mod Podge and using a sponge brush, I'm going to cover the entire outside of the bowl with the Mod Podge. And for those of you who are not familiar with Mod Podge, it's a glue that is commonly used for decoupage. It goes on white, but actually dries clear. And it also comes in a variety of finishes, such as matte, glossy, satin, or even glitter. But for this bowl, it won't really matter what type of finish you use, which I'll show you why in a moment. For now, just make sure every square inch of the bowl on the outside is covered with a coat of Mod Podge, except you can leave the bottom of the bowl as is because we'll be doing something else with that later. And just a little background on this bowl, this bowl was actually abandoned from a previous project that I attempted a few years ago that just didn't work out. But today, I'm going to give it a brand new look. our bowl has a coat of Mod Podge, we're going to take some glitter and sprinkle it all over the outside of the bowl where we applied the Mod Podge. Here I have chosen black glitter, but you could choose whatever color you prefer or have on hand. This is just what I had on hand and I was curious to see how the black glitter would contrast with the rest of my silver, some gold and white home decor. I figure a pop of neutral color wouldn't hurt. Now, when applying the glitter, try to sprinkle it onto the bowl's surface as evenly as possible so you don't get clumps of glitter and clumps of empty space. And you'll notice I'm being pretty generous with the glitter. That's because I want my bowl to be really dark midnight black and I certainly don't want to be able to see through the bowl when we're done. And by the way, by the time we're done, I expect that I would have applied at least two to three coats of this Mod Podge and glitter to be able to achieve the midnight black finish that I want. So this is what the bowl looks like after just one coat. You can still see the metallic silver paint underneath, but it's a good first coat of glitter that we have applied. And in case y'all are worried that the glitter fallout will be wasted, that is not going to be the case. When using glitter, I always, always sprinkle the glitter on top of a piece of craft paper to catch the fallout so I can gather it all up and pour them back into my glitter container. And the great thing is it's so easy and quick because I just fold up the craft paper with the glitter inside and then I pour it into a little funnel placed into the glitter container. Everything is contained and there's almost no mess because all the leftover glitter slides straight into the glitter container. Now with that all done, I do want to shake off any excess from the bowl before applying a second coat. So here I'm gently tapping the sides of the bowl and you can see there is some excess glitter that didn't stick to the Mod Podge that is falling onto the craft paper. I'll clean that up and then I'm going to take a can of hairspray and I'm spraying the entire outside of the bowl. This will quicken the drying process so I can apply my second coat of Mod Podge right away without having to wait. 
In previous projects, I would wait for the Mod Podge to completely dry, which could take a couple of hours, but with the hairspray method, everything will set in just a few minutes, and then I can continue with the next coat of Mod Podge and glitter. And that's because the hairspray is already sticky, and because it contains alcohol, it dries very fast. And if you're still with me, comment down below with the word bowl and let me know if you have ever used hairspray method before or if you just wait for the Mod Podge to air dry before applying the next coat. And speaking of the next coat, with the second coat of Mod Podge, we can repeat the exact same steps that we did earlier. And by the way, you could opt to water down the Mod Podge slightly if you prefer, which is what I ended up doing. The additional water helps to liquefy the Mod Podge so it's not so thick. That way, the application can go on smoother and more evenly. I found this method helped with applying the subsequent coats of glitter because the bowl's surface is no longer smooth but rather gritty due to the glitter. So when brushing on the Mod Podge, it glides easier when the Mod Podge is slightly watered down. And while we work on this second coat, I would like to take a moment to thank you for tuning in to today's craft project. If you enjoy glam home decor and DIY crafts on a budget, please help me grow my channel by hitting that subscribe button. And if you like what you see today, please give me a thumbs up as well so the YouTube gods will continue to recommend my channel to other viewers like you. And the best part is, subscribing and giving me a thumbs up is absolutely free, but will make a world of difference to me and my channel. Alright, so we have our second coat of Mod Podge applied, so we're ready to go in with our second layer of glitter. Once again, I'm being very generous with the glitter as I want the entire surface of the bowl to be covered until you cannot see through the bowl at all. And here's what the bowl looks like fully dry. The black is actually a very bright, vibrant and shimmery black and it definitely glitters when the light hits it, which is exactly the look I was going for so I'm very happy about that. Next we're going to give the bowl a bit of height using the silver hammer tea light holder I found at the Dollarama. To adhere the tea light holder, I'm using a strong adhesive as I definitely don't want the bowl to detach from the tea light holder. You can use either E6000 or in my case, I'm using Fix All. Then I'm going to place it right dead center to the bottom of the bowl. Unlike hot glue, the Fix All takes a while for it to fully cure, so you'll have ample time to adjust the positioning of the tea light holder as necessary. I let the bowl sit overnight and now the Fix All is fully cured and this is what our pedestal bowl looks like so far. But we're not done yet. I want to camouflage the bottom edge of the bowl where the glitter ends because it looks kind of messy. So I'm going to hot glue a string of silver beaded necklace and this will also add a beautiful design detail to the bowl. The silver beads will also match the silver tea light holder giving the bowl a more consistent look and feel. And if you're still with me, drop me a note with the word bowl and let me know what color you would choose for this bowl. Do you think the black is too bold? What if I made this bowl gold, silver or white? Or how about a red or purple one? Let me know down in the comments because I got lots of glitter in different colors and I'm curious to know what you would like to see on this crafting channel. And now we're going to work on the opening of the bowl. We're going to apply the same silver beaded necklace all around the rim of the bowl as well. Another design detail that I think will really give this bowl a really upscaled look. And while I apply the second string of silver beaded necklace, you can all see the inside of the bowl has a silver balayage kind of tone to it, which I think looks quite pretty and unique. And that's because when I originally painted this outside of this bowl, I only applied one coat of paint to the bowl. If I had applied several coats, then you would see a more solid opaque silver color instead, which I think would also look great. Thank you. 
Okay, so we're almost done with this bowl. The outside of the bowl looks great, but the inside still needs a tiny bit of work. There used to be a Dollar Tree sticker on the bottom of the bowl. Unfortunately, when I removed the sticker, you could still see the outline of the sticker, which really doesn't look good. So I want to cover that up. I'm taking this round five inch mirror and removing the little felt pads on the bottom. Typically these mirrors would be used to hold a candle on it, but we're simply going to place this mirror inside the bowl and sit it right on the bottom of the bowl. To make sure the mirror stays in place, I'm going to use a little bit of hot glue. But you could also use a stronger adhesive like E6000 or Fix-All if you prefer a stronger, more long lasting hold. And here's the final look for our first pedestal bowl. Look how the bowl absolutely sparkles when the light hits the black litter. And the silver detailing gives this bowl an exquisite look that screams high-end and luxurious. I can't wait to showcase this bowl on my shelf. Comment down below with the word bowl and let me know what you think of this bowl design. Is this something you would try to make for your home? And if so, what color glitter would you choose? And now let's continue with our second bowl design. Here I actually have a Dollar Tree garden dish. This one is round and rather flat. It's also clear and it's made of plastic as well so it's very lightweight. Once again, we're going to be using Mod Podge, but this time we're going to apply the Mod Podge to the inside of the garden dish. And if you're still with me, let me know in the comments if you have ever crafted with Mod Podge, and if you have, what have you made with the Mod Podge? Ironically, I have only decoupage once with Mod Podge many years ago, and since then I mainly use it as a glue for glitter as well as a sealant over faux marble made from paint. In a project I did a few weeks ago, I did use Mod Podge to give a custom frame I was making out of plastic Hot Wheels race tracks and hot glue a shiny finish, and that actually turned out beautifully. But one day, I would also like to decoupage a piece of beautiful artwork onto a table surface or maybe a tray. Now, with the Mod Podge applied, we're going to go in with some glitter, but this time I have chosen white glitter. Similar to our last bowl we made, we'll need to apply more than one coat of Mod Podge and glitter. But this time, I'm going to skip the hairspray and wait for each coat of Mod Podge to fully dry before applying the next coat. And what I like about this bowl design is that we're applying the glitter on the inside, which means I'll be able to have less glitter fallout. I can simply swirl the loose glitter inside the bowl until all the glitter catches onto the Mod Podge. With that said though, I did have some big challenges making this bowl. I ended up applying no less than three coats of Mod Podge and glitter, but each time the bowl dried and I went in to inspect the bowl, I could still see through the bowl, so I thought. Because the glitter is white and I have the bowl set on a black background, I thought I was seeing a black foam board through the bowl, but I soon discovered that wasn't the case at all. In fact, what was happening was that the foam brush I was using had started to fall apart and little tiny pieces of it was getting onto the bowl while I was Mod Podging the bowl. And with the glitter on the bowl, there was enough texture on the bowl that when I was gliding the foam brush across the glitter, tiny bits of the foam was getting ripped off onto the bowl. By the time I realized that, the foam pieces were already stuck onto the bowl and there really was no way to remove them. I was really disappointed because for this bowl, I had envisioned a snow white opaque color for the bowl. After some thought, I decided to fix this problem by painting the bowl white. I used some leftover paint from a previous reno project and wow, this paint went on really white, which is exactly the color I wanted. And of course, this time I ditched the foam brush and went for a regular paint brush. I covered every square inch of the bowl on the inside and as soon as I had a coat of paint applied, you could no longer see any of the black specks of foam pieces at all. With all the white paint on, now I realize the glitter I applied previously was also completely covered with the white paint, but I really wanted a glittery finish for the inside of the bowl. So I went for the bottle of the white glitter and sprinkled a layer of it directly onto the white paint that I had just applied to the bowl. The glitter had no problem adhering to the paint whatsoever, and instantly the bowl went from a matte white finish to a white glittery finish.
after I let the bowl to sit so the paint could dry fully, I went back in with a final coat of glossy Mod Podge. This was so I could set everything in place and prevent any loose glitter. And by the time I was done with this coat of Mod Podge, I noticed the garden dish had a little bit of weight to it, which I thought was actually great since the ultimate goal was to transform this plastic dollar store garden dish into a more high-end looking luxurious dish that I could showcase on my shelf. Now, the next part of this project was quite fun. I have a couple of these silicone molds I got off Amazon. Typically, these molds are used in baking to make cakes, but I'm using them for crafting. And we're going to make some beautiful embellishments for our bowl. There are a number of designs in the mold, so you could choose whatever design you prefer. And once you have selected a design, go ahead and inject the mold with hot glue. Once the molds are filled with hot glue, you'll need to wait a couple of minutes for the hot glue to cool to the point that you can easily pop the hot glue pieces out of the mold. Then you'll want to repeat until you have several pieces completed. The number of pieces you'll need, of course, will depend on which design you choose as well as how you position them onto the bowl. When I was done making all the pieces I needed, I went ahead and painted a couple of them. This one is painted with metallic gold acrylic paint from the Dollar Tree. It looks quite nice, but it's a bit on the dark side in comparison to this piece here that I painted using a gold chrome metallic marker. I think both pieces look beautiful, but the paint finish you end up choosing will really depend on your own personal preference. I would love to know what you guys all prefer, so comment down below with the word bowl and let me know if you prefer the darker finish or the lighter finish. For mine, I decided to paint all of my pieces using the gold chrome metallic marker because I wanted a lighter, brighter finish. And here I'm playing around with the potential design of the garden dish by placing the pieces all around the outside of the garden dish. You can position the pieces so they face each other, or opposite each other, or all in the same direction. And really, I think all the different patterns I played around with look really nice. Once you have settled on a pattern, you can easily adhere the pieces to the bowl with, you guessed it, more hot glue. Simply turn each piece over and apply a thin bead of hot glue all over the back of the piece, and then lay it flat onto the side of the garden dish. Here, I'm pressing down firmly to make sure the entire piece adheres securely to the garden dish. I'll hold each piece in place for several seconds until the hot glue has cooled. Then, I'll repeat the same steps until all the pieces are secured onto the side of the garden dish. And by the way, links to all the crafting tools, including the silicone mold I'm using today, will be in the description box in case you want to grab any of the items for your own crafts. So while we work on embellishing this garden dish, I would also be curious to know if you have any suggestions or requests on a home decor craft piece you would like to see me work on for my next project. So feel free to comment down below with your suggestions or requests and include any details regarding a specific design, size or color for the craft piece. I'll try my very best to pick one or two ideas for my craft channel.
And here's what the garden dish looks like so far with all the pieces secured onto the side of the garden dish. Now this garden dish is looking a little flat, but we're going to fix that and give it a bit of height. I have this white ceramic tea light holder that I found at the Dollar Tree. If you turn it upside down, it kind of looks like a pleated skirt. What I ended up doing was I Mod Podge one layer of white glitter onto the tea light holder to give it a bit of texture. And then I went back in with a single coat of white paint. Then I added a single row of rhinestone ribbon along the vertical of the pleats. Now we're going to hot glue the bottom of the tea light holder and adhere it to the bottom of our garden dish. Make sure when you place the tea light holder onto the bottom of the garden dish that you position it in the center. With the hot glue, you will not have any time to reposition the tea light holder since the hot glue will set pretty much right away. If you need more time though to position things, I would recommend using either Fix All or E6000 instead. And here's what the garden dish looks like so far, but we're not quite done with the embellishments. I really want the garden dish to pop, so I'm going to take a string of gold beaded necklace and hot glue it onto the rim all around the opening of the garden dish. The gold beads will be a great complement to the gold embellishments on the side of the garden dish, giving this piece a more finished look. This garden dish now has some weight to it. Between the layers of Mod Podge, glitter and paint, along with the ceramic tea light holder on the bottom of the garden dish, this pedestal bowl is now pretty heavy and the gold embellishments also help to elevate the look. And here's the final look for our second pedestal bowl. This one actually looks pretty regal with the gold embellishments. And there is a subtle sparkle on the inside of the bowl when the sunlight hits it. The tea light holder on the bottom gives the otherwise flat garden dish some much needed height and really brings the whole piece together as a showpiece. Comment down below with the word bowl and let me know what you think of this second pedestal bowl design. In the meantime, let's continue with our third pedestal bowl. Once again, I have a clear plastic bowl from the Dollar Tree. This one is oval shaped, but the rim has a nice scallop curve to it, which gives this bowl a pretty unique shape. I love how oval and flat the bottom is as well. The first thing we'll do is frame the entire rim of the bowl with a string of silver beaded necklace. I chose to use tacky glue this time because it's a thin glue and is supposed to dry clear. I wanted to use something that would not leave any unsightly glue marks because unlike the first two bowls we worked on, I have decided to leave this bowl clear, which means no paint and no glitter. The challenge for me though was to come up with a design for this bowl that would still be pretty and unique. Now with the silver beads adhered to the bowl, we're going to let the tacky glue dry. So in the meantime, we're going to make some legs for this bowl. Here I have four clear diamond shaped acrylic gems and four silver ornament balls. All of these, by the way, are from the Dollar Tree. First, we're going to snip the tips off each ornament ball. There will be a little hole left where the tip used to be. Then we'll take a bit of hot glue and apply it all around the inner edge of the hole. And then we're going to insert the pointy tip of one of the diamond shaped acrylic gems into the hole. Make sure it's inserted straight because you don't want the leg to be lopsided. Then repeat the same steps until you have made a set of four legs. And by the way, if you don't have any of these materials on hand to make the legs, you could take a shortcut and simply use crystal doorknobs as legs instead. They'll actually look even prettier, but they will be a little bit more expensive, although still budget friendly. I'll leave a link to the crystal doorknobs that I usually use down in the description box in case you would like to get some for your crafts. Otherwise, these custom made ones will do just fine. In fact, I really like using the silver ornament balls because they have a mirror-like finish that will complement the silver beads we used earlier to embellish the rim of our bowl.
Now with all four legs done, turn the bowl upside down and remove the sticker from the bottom of the bowl. As I mentioned, we won't be painting this bowl so we definitely don't want to see the sticker on the bottom. I know in previous projects I on a few occasions was guilty of forgetting to remove the store sticker and some of you caught that and put me to shame with your feedback, which by the way, I always welcome. Anyhow, now we're going to adhere our custom made legs to the bottom of the bowl in a rectangular pattern. Now normally I would just use hot glue for this, but I want to avoid hot glue that will dry white and clumpy. So I'm going to use Fix All, although it will take several hours for it to fully cure. But at least it won't leave clumpy white marks on the bowl. Okay, so it's the next day and everything has dried, but as I'm inspecting the rim of the bowl where the silver beads were applied, I can see through the bowl and there are white glue marks that I did not expect to see from the tacky glue. So we're going to fix that by applying a second string of silver beads above the lip of the bowl right on the rim. And this time I'm going to go ahead and just hot glue it. At least the hot glue will cool and dry immediately so I don't have to wait to complete the design of this bowl. Now, to give this bowl some design detail, I'm going to apply a thin gold line directly onto the lip of the bowl in between the two strings of silver beads. Rather than using acrylic paint, which may be difficult to keep a steady hand if you want to use a paintbrush, you can use any gold metallic marker or paint pen to achieve this look. I have seen gold metallic markers at the Dollar Tree. Although they don't give a lot of shimmer, they'll do. But if you want a shimmer effect that is a little bit of higher quality, you could use a higher end chrome marker instead. You can check my description box for a list of all my favorite crafting tools including paint pens and chrome markers that you can purchase online. And a little tip is, if you want the gold to really pop, you can go over it again a second time. Adding the gold is a subtle touch but I think it makes the look of this pedestal bowl. Now what we still need to work on is the bottom of the bowl. Since you can see right through the bowl, you can see a tiny bit of the fix-all that we use to adhere the legs to the bowl. So I'm going to go ahead and cover that up by adding a few strings of silver beads along the bottom of the bowl. This is really a unconventional way of embellishing a bowl, but we can be a little bit unique here, right? And I think the silver beads applied to the bottom of the bowl really ties things together because it matches the silver beads we applied along the opening of the bowl. And you can choose to cover the entire bottom of the bowl with the silver beads or you can leave the center as is like I will. But whatever you choose, make sure you clean off those pesky glue strings left behind.
So to clean up the glue strings, I'll just take a dry paintbrush and troll it around the glue strings to remove them from the bowl. It's a little hack that actually works really well to clear off the messy glue strings. And here's the final look for our third pedestal bowl. I think this design looks pretty neat because the contrast between the silver and gold around the opening of the bowl is beautiful. And the silver legs with its mirror-like finish gives this bowl just a tiny bit of height. And here's what all three pieces look like together. Each design is so different and they have all very unique looks. But showcased together, they make a beautiful set on any shelf or table. Comment down below with the word bowl. And if you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe to my channel and share with other creative gems. Also hit the notification bell and check out these next videos for more amazing glam home decor craft ideas.